Hey, I have a little something prepared for you to conduct more thorough analysis in Excel. So let's get started with regression analysis in Excel. Regression analysis is useful when you want to see the relationship between a dependent variable and the independent variable. So here, our independent variable is the weekly returns of Nifty 500, which is a market-wide index. And here we have a company called the United Spirits Limited with its weekly returns. So we want to see how much of the weekly returns of USL is dependent on the weekly returns of Nifty 500. So for that, first let's go to Alt, Data. Here you will see Data Analysis Tool Pack. Just click on Y2 and we will go to Regression here. In case you do not see the data analysis tool pack here, simply go to Alt, F and down here you will see options. Just click on options. In add-ins, you can go here and here you can check the analysis tool pack and you can click on OK. Then you will be able to see data analysis in your Excel workbook. So let's go to Alt, Data and we can click on Y2 for data analysis. Here you will see regression. So let's click on OK. Now there are two kinds of variables that we have. One is the independent variable and the second is the dependent variable. So the dependent variable is defined as the Y range. So here we will insert the weekly returns of USL. And in the second range, we will insert the independent variable, which is the weekly returns of Nifty 500. So let's select that. We need to keep the labels checked since we have taken the headers here in the range. Our confidence level is 95%, which is fine. It's a default. And we need our analysis in a new worksheet. So let's keep this checked and let's name it as regression. Let's click on OK and here you will be able to see a regression summary output that Excel generates for us. So let's go ahead and understand each of the tables. Uh, let's first increase the column width here to see the entire text. So in the first table, you will be able to see a multiple R. Now this value is the correlation between the dependent variable and the independent variable. So there is a 41% correlation between Nifty 500's weekly returns and USL. Higher the number, which is let's say it is more than 50% or it's 65%, the better the correlation between the two variables. R square measures how much of the variance in the dependent variable is driven by the independent variable. So this will measure how much of the variance in the USL weekly returns is driven by the Nifty 500 weekly returns. So it is 16.8% here. Next is the adjusted R square. Adjusted R square takes into account all the independent variables in our data set and removes any bias. Usually this metric is useful when there are multiple independent variables. But here we only have one independent variable, which is the Nifty 500 weekly returns. So this is not very useful to us. Now standard error should be as less as possible since it measures how much the average distance of your dependent variables are from the regression line. And the number of observations here, as you can see, are 521 in the data. So we don't need to go and see that. Um, next, we can come to the ANOVA table. In the ANOVA table, what is significant is the p-value here. We can convert this into a number format to make it more clear. Now, in order to understand this value, let's understand what null hypothesis and alternate hypothesis is. So whenever you're conducting any regression analysis, you always have two hypotheses. First is the null hypothesis. Second is the alternative hypothesis. In the null hypothesis, we are saying that there is no linear relationship between Nifty 500 weekly returns and USL 
weekly returns. This is what we are defining in the null hypothesis. And in the alternative hypothesis, let's wrap the text here. We can just increase the length. And in the alternative hypothesis, we are saying that there is a linear relationship between the two variables, which is Nifty 500 weekly returns and US week, USL weekly returns. Now, how do we prove which of the following hypothesis is true? So, in case the p-value is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, then we say that the null hypothesis is true and our model is not significant which means that there is no significant relationship between the two variables. And if our p-value is less than 0 0.05, we say that there is a linear relationship between the two variables. So in this case, as you can see, the p-value or the significance test is indicating that our alternative hypothesis is true since the p-value is less than 0 0.05. Next, let's come to this table. In order to understand this table, we need to understand the equation of regression, which is y equals to m into x plus c. Here, the intercept which is mentioned here is the value of c, which is the y-intercept. m is the slope of the graph, which is the x-intercept. And x is the value of the independent variable. So if we put these values into the formula, we will get a value for y, which is the dependent variable. So let's see, y is equal to m is 0 0.97, x will be into x, and plus c is 0 0.0012. So this is what our equation looks like. Now if we have the independent variable data points in our data set, Excel can easily predict the values of the dependent variable, which is y. Next, let's come to these metrics here, which is tstat and p-value. Let's convert this into the number format. Yeah. Now, tstat is simply used to compute the p-value of this analysis. Now, here again, we will have to define some hypothesis in order to understand the p-value. So, here our null hypothesis is that the intercept is equal to 0 and our alternate hypothesis is that the intercept is not equal to 0. And the same logic applies here. The p-value is greater than or equal to 0 0.05, then the null hypothesis is true. If the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then the alternative hypothesis is true. And here, as you can see, the p-value is 0 0.59, which is higher than 0 0.05. So, our null hypothesis stands true, which is the intercept is 0. Next is the weekly returns, which is also the slope of our graph. Here, as you can see, the slope is 0 0.00, which is less than 0 0.05. This means that there is a significant relationship between the Nifty 500's weekly returns and the USL's weekly returns. Hope this bonus session has added value to your skill set. Thanks for staying put till the end of this course. All the best.